Alright guys, so welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, fast video today. We're gonna react to Proving Islam in 5 minutes and 10 seconds by the channel Achmerio Khalid. Of course, I do not need any further proof on why Islam is the truth. I accepted Islam roughly two years ago by now, alhamdulillah. But it is always good to collect points and arguments about Islam that we can then use in the future, inshallah. Alright guys, but before we start with the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. I'm going to prove that Islam is the truth in a short amount of time. I have put so much hard work into this video, bro. And after so much hard work, I've collected five points that will help us prove Islam. So let's, let's begin. Go. Proof number one. If I showed you this art and I asked you where did it come from, the answer that you will probably give me is that an artist made it. You will not say that this art, which clearly shows intelligent design, is made by randomness. But when the same question is asked that who made this universe, then some people just don't like to use the same logic. They do not say that the universe is created by an intelligent creator. Bro, very weird, isn't it, that when it comes to the question that where did this complex universe come from? And suddenly just people just stop using this logic that if this art is made by an artist, then with the same logic, the, this universe must have been made by a creator as well. Yes, we've discussed this argument many times here on this channel, and I'm not saying this to discard the argument. Quite the opposite, it is still a good argument. It is a theological argument from design, ultimately, that everything has a designer. Not only the art that he just showed, but your phone, for example, your laptop, your house, your car, etc., etc., you name it. Everything has an inventor, everything has a creator, everything has a designer. And therefore, then, if you use this logic and you extend it further, you come to the conclusion that this creation, this world, must have had a designer. But instead of using this logic, they start to make false assumptions about the origin of the universe that have no proof. And many average people, unfortunately, fall for it. So now that we agree that this universe got a creator, then you might ask a question, who created the creator? Which leads me to the second proof, proving Islam. You might be wondering, how does this question that who created Allah prove that Allah exists? Bro, let's deeply think on it for a bit. We have to use our deep thinking for it. Point is that this universe must have an independent creator that is not created by anything. If the creator of this universe had a creator, then Infinite the question will come up, then who created that creator? For that, the question will come up, who created the other creator that created the creator? So if we go on this forever, this cycle would never end. And for that reason, we wouldn't have had this universe in the first place. This dependent universe is a proof that all of the universe must have an independent creator that is not created by anything. We agree that he is not created by anything. I agree with this point, of course. The atheists would not. They would say that something came from nothing ultimately. They wouldn't go so far back to say that there was a first cause other than the Big Bang. This is where they draw the line. And this is why I always refer to Terence McKenna, who used to be a psychonaut, a philosopher, if you will. And he said that modern day science operates under one premise grant us one miracle and we explain the rest which means you grant us the big bang poof and then we explain how everything else came about but the real question is of course how did the big bang come about how can something come out of nothing this is if you really think about it an even greater miracle of course than saying that there is a creator that there is a god because you are saying that nothingness no atoms no quarks nothing literally nothing creates something but anyways his second argument here is the argument of infinite regress ultimately asking yourself in a universe that exists through causal chains cause and effect cause and effect cause and effect so starting somewhere the question is okay why am i here because i had parents right they met so how did they came about? They had parents. And so you rewind back, 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 back until you reach essentially the creation of the universe, which in scientism is called the Big Bang. But then the question becomes, of course, what causes it, as we said? And so therefore the theologian will say it was God. The atheist then will say, okay, who created God? If you then would say that another God created that God, then the question becomes, okay, if that is possible, then who created that God? So therefore, to stop this infinite regress, you need a first cause that is uncreated. We agree that this universe and humans are created by Allah. Then you might ask a question, why do I have to follow religion? 
third point proving Islam. How does this prove that Islam is the truth? That's because when we analyze humans, we will realize that humans must have a big purpose. You might ask a question, why do humans must have a big purpose given by the creator of this world? The answer to that is that a high level of abstract thinking and the critical thinking humans do. Choice to choose between right and wrong. They have the ability to choose to hurt others or please others. This, all of us are created by Allah. So if Allah have created a complex living thing called humans, which have the ability to do so many things that animals can't do, then Allah himself must have given a purpose for humans as well. I don't necessarily find this a good argument because as you just said, Allah created the animals as well, right? And the animals cannot reflect like human beings. But if only animals would live on this planet, would then that mean that there is no God, that there is no Allah? I would highly disagree with this. How will we know what that purpose is? The answer is Quran, which creator of this world sent down to guide humanity. The book which mentions the purpose of humans on this earth. So now we agree that there must be a religion that, that the creator of this world wants us to follow. Now you might ask a question, why is only Islam? Why not any other religious book? Which atheist. brings me to the fourth point which will help us prove Islam. Quran must come from the creator of this world. The proof of that is that Arabs of the time more than 1400 years ago were very, very good at Arabic. But when they heard the Quran, they knew that the humans cannot write this. Quran is unchanged for more than 1400 years. It must have challenged in the Quran to even make a surah like the Quran. The shortest surah in the Quran only got three verses. And still, people have not been able to produce even a surah like the Quran. And on top of that, when you study other major religions in the world like Christianity, the Bible got mistakes. So there must be a true religion on this planet. People who know classical Arabic very well can understand the linguistic miracle of the Quran. Which proves that Quran is surely sent by the creator of this world, Allah Azawajal. There are also scientific miracles in the Quran. You can look that up on trusted websites. If the Quran was from other than Allah, they would have found many contradictions in it. People who claim that there are contradictions in the Quran clearly are ignorant and those people have been refuted. Also, you might ask a question that, what if Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, wrote the Quran or took someone's help in writing the Quran? Which brings me to the fifth proof proving Islam. You should know that our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, did not know how to read and write. So our Prophet, peace be upon him, could not have wrote the Quran. And it is not possible for our Prophet, peace be upon him, to took someone's help to write the Quran. Because in humans, no matter how much someone is good yeah, at Arabic, okay. or even I would have made the previous points much longer before coming to this. I believe that the atheist mind needs more proof. I would have even added a couple of points. But that being said, when it comes down to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam not being able to read or write, the very critical, analytical atheist mind, essentially paired with a lot of cynicism here, can come to the conclusion, well, somebody else wrote it for him, right? Or some people even give the argument, the prophet, maybe peace be upon him, never existed actually. So I think that coming to this point this fast is not very convincing to the atheist mind. Great Arabic poets have been able to produce even a surah like the Quran. And the shortest surah in the Quran, like I mentioned before, is only three verses. So it must come from the creator of this world. And on top of that, our Prophet, peace be upon him, was offered so much wealth, status. In exchange that our Prophet, peace be upon him, should stop spreading Islam. But that did not happen. No amount of wealth or worldly desires stopped our Prophet, peace be upon him from spreading Islam, which proves that our Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was surely sent by the creator of this world, Allah Azawajal, for the guidance of humanity. I have to play devil's advocate here in this video. I like to critique points. As I said, I already accepted Islam, alhamdulillah, but not really for those reasons. When it comes down to a person not going after wealth, not going after worldly desires and spreading their message, this doesn't then automatically mean that the message is correct. This is really a bad argument, actually, because you can look at certain cult leaders, you can look at all kinds of different religions, you can look at political movements, nationalism and whatnot. Many people died for a higher cause, if you will, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that cause, therefore, is correct. We cannot use this as an argument. Oh, right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I said pretty much everything I wanted to say throughout it. Guys, if you enjoyed my work leave me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel comment down below check out the links in the description box as well to further support my work and as always may god bless you all much love and peace <laughs>